You are performing this repair at your own risk. You cannot be held responsible for any injuries to yourself or damage done to your device while attempting a repair. In this video, we'll be demonstrating how to replace the front glass and digitizer assembly on the iPad first generation, also known as the iPad 1. Here you can see we have a cracked screen. However, chances are your iPad works 100% fine. It's purely cosmetic. It's not always the issue. Sometimes you may have dead spots in the touchscreen, but typically it will somewhat still function normally. Now if your actual LCD display is cracked, maybe in addition to the front glass being cracked, you'll also need to replace that part. And by following this video, you will see just how to do that as well. Now when replacing the front glass and digitizer, be sure to purchase this full frame assembly, which includes the home button, as well as the plastic frame that the actual glass sits in. Now you can see this antenna here, which is unique to the 3G model. If you have just the Wi-Fi iPad edition, it will not have this cable. Otherwise, this process will be identical. So you want to make sure to purchase the correct part for either the 3G or just the Wi-Fi iPad 1 model. There are a few tools that you will need for this repair. The most important are the metal case opener tools. These will allow you to pry the screen up without damaging your iPad. At this point, we're ready to pry up the old screen. And we'll first want to make sure that the iPad is turned off. Now here's a close-up look at where we'll actually be prying. So it's going to be in between the metal and the rubber seal that goes around the perimeter of the screen. You don't want to pry in between the glass and the rubber seal. So what we're actually going to do is pry in the areas of the locations of these metal clips that are located around the perimeter of the iPad. And you can see just where those are located by looking at your replacement front assembly. There are a number on the left, the top, and the bottom. On the right side, you'll see a number of plastic tabs that sit in indents in the casing of the iPad. Now there are a few areas that you do not want to pry around. The first is the sync port. Also, the external speaker. On the side, we have the volume as well as the screen lock and at the top we have the power button. Also the headphone jack and if you have a 3G the SIM card tray. Now we'll pry around the three sides where the metal clips are located and we can refer to our replacement glass to see the location of these clips. Most of the clips will actually break while you're prying up the screen. Now this isn't an issue because you no longer need them. However, later on in the video, when you have the front screen assembly removed, be sure to remove these broken pieces from the inside back casing of the iPad before you reapply your new screen. Once we've freed all the clips, we'll want to open the iPad screen on an angle from the side of the SIM tray. This will allow us access to a total of four cables in the 3G and three in the Wi-Fi, difference being the 3G antenna. These cables will need to be removed so that we can lift up the screen assembly. This is a very important step so we're going to give you detailed close-up video showing you how to remove each of these cables. The first cable we'll undo 
leads to the digitizer. It's actually one cable that splits into two ports. And we'll remove this by flipping up two black tabs that are currently in the horizontal position. We'll want to flip these up so that they sit in the vertical position and this will release the tension holding those cables inside of the port. And then we can simply slip that cable out of its port. Now the next cable we'll remove leads to the light sensor and this simply unplugs from the board. So we'll wedge our case opener tool under there and gently lift in the upward direction. This next step will only go for the iPad 3G. If you just have a Wi-Fi edition it will not have this cable. So we'll go ahead and unplug this antenna from the board in the same manner we used to remove the plug leading to the light sensor. It will simply lift up and unplug from the logic board. We have one final cable to remove which leads to the LCD screen. Up until you reach the port the cable is held in with tape, so we'll peel that back and free it from the adhesive. Now we're going to use this black strip to lift up the clamp that's holding this cable in place. So we'll lift it up with our fingers as shown here and that will allow us to slide that cable out from its port. The front assembly is now completely separated from the rest of the iPad. We're now going to deal strictly with the front assembly and this includes the front glass and digitizer as well as the LCD screen. What we need to do now is remove the LCD screen from the old front assembly and insert it into the new one. In order to remove the LCD screen, we'll have to remove a number of T5 Torx screws that are holding the LCD to the front assembly. Next, we're going to remove this black strip of tape as shown in the video. Now the light sensor cable is adhered to both the LCD and the front black frame. We're going to want to free it from the adhesive holding it to the front black frame. This next step is only relevant for the iPad with 3G. If you have a strictly Wi-Fi only model, this cable will not be present. We're going to want to peel this cable away from the LCD screen, which is held in with adhesive. Now we're ready to remove the LCD screen from its insert in the front assembly. You want to be extremely careful while doing this so as not to crack the LCD screen. We'll lift it out using our pry tools as demonstrated in the video. Be very gentle. It is sometimes relatively difficult to remove the screen as it's held in pretty snug. So don't force anything. Ease up on the screen and allow it to come out on its own.
with the screen removed, we'll set it face down on a clean surface to prevent it from getting dirty. Here we have our new front assembly. We'll first remove the protective shield covering the inside of the glass. Next, we'll carefully insert our original LCD screen in our new front assembly. There is one plastic insert from our old front assembly that we will need to remove. This plastic insert is for the light sensor. We'll pry it out using our metal pry tool as demonstrated in the video. We'll then insert this plastic piece into our new front assembly and re-adhere the light sensor over this black piece. Now if you're working with a 3G iPad, we'll also want to adhere the antenna cable to the LCD screen. Next, we'll reinsert all the screws holding the LCD screen to the front assembly. All that's left to do is to plug our cables back in and snap our frame into place. The first cable we'll plug in leads to the 3G antenna. Again, if you have the Wi-Fi only iPad, this cable does not exist and you can skip this step. Here's a close up on just how that cable plugs back in. The next cable we'll want to plug in is for the LCD. Now be sure that when you're closing the iPad, this cable is tucked in its original place where it was held in with tape. Here you can see a close-up demonstration of how that cable goes back in place. Now we'll plug in the cable that leads to the light sensor. And this will simply plug back into its port. Now the final cable that we have to reinsert leads to the digitizer. We'll insert this cable into its two ports and we'll flip the black tabs in the downward or horizontal direction. This will hold this cable in place with tension and make sure that each of the pins has a secure connection.
we'll also want to bend this digitizer cable towards the inside of the iPad. Before we latch the screen in place, we'll want to power the iPad on to confirm that all is working properly. Now, it should be noted that the home button will not yet work because there are two connections on the board that are only made when the screen is closed. When latching the screen back in place, we'll first insert the plastic tabs on the side of the iPad with the volume and screen lock keys. Make sure that side is flush and then we can begin snapping the clips on the top and bottom of the iPad and we'll work our way towards the side opposite the volume button. We'll then want to lay our iPad flat and go around once more to secure any free clips. For a full line of parts and services for this model as well as a number of others, please visit our website, gadgetmenus.com. Thanks for watching.